Okay, I have a bunch of these uh, titanium scrap parts. These were uh, thrown away by someone, a friend of mine gave them to me. So um, let's make some, um, some logos out of these titanium plates, just as a demo. Um, so I can show a bit uh, the process of how to operate my machine, just on a high level. Uh, some users would like to see that, so okay, let's make a video uh, on how to make my machine and let's have some fun while doing it. So I'm going to make some logos out of this, but first um, I'm going to take a few of these and weld them together. We finished uh, welding five of these uh, plates together. Actually, never welded titanium before, but uh, with TIG, you can weld just about anything. So that turned out really nice. So now I'm going to uh, mount it in my EDM machine. Okay, welded up the plates, and uh, yeah, they really snug together. So we can put it in my EDM machine. It's a bit of an old ball shape, so. I think I'm just going to take out a clamp and clamp it to the workpiece table here, just like that. Really simple. So I clamped it to the table, and uh, yeah, now it's time to uh, yeah, start machining. So what I do now is uh, first I move the machine into position a bit, just using the arrows on the keyboard. Now we move it around somewhere here. Uh, that seems to be a nice starting position. Then I have to lower the uh, the upper head. So I. Unbolt these two screws here, this one and this one. Uh, put the flushing head on the right height, just visually, a bit above the workpiece, like that. And I bolt the screws down, and that's it. Okay. Now I can flush the tank, so uh, I put in this piece, I pull this piece out when I need the, the tank empty, so I can regulate the water height by using different lengths of pipe, I just put this pipe in here, and uh, yeah, then the water cannot get higher than this level, because then it will flow over and drain, drain away. So. That's ready. Now I can turn on my water. So here's my Dynamotion interface. I have uh, several buttons here. So, uh, where's my mouse? Here's my mouse. Once for workpiece flushing, once for wire transport, turning the arc on and off, flood and cooling pump. So when I press this one now, my flood and cooling pump goes on. And I have a few valves here that uh, regulate the flow. So, at the moment it's set to uh, circulate through my uh, cooling pump. Now I can reroute the circulation to fill the tank, like this. And then now I'm filling my tank. And when the tank is full, I reroute the circulation to the cooler again. And uh, yeah, that's it. And this tap is for circulating it through the uh, deionization resin filter, the orange stuff. I'm not using that right now, as my water conductivity level is yeah, just about right. Should be somewhere between 15 and 30, so it's a bit on the high side, but it's good enough for now. So I have to wait until the tank is full, then when the tank is full, uh, first I load my G-code, so I can uh, just say uh, open 
open file and then it opens my uh, G code. At the moment the G code is loaded for logo. Uh, like this. So the G code is loaded, then I uh, enable the chiller. Um, like this. I, when I click this, I'm not doing it now, but when I click this, the, the pump will go on, the main flushing pump, which is a bit noisy. So I'm not doing it now because then you cannot understand me. And then when I press wire transport, the wire starts to move. So here it's pulled off and it's reeled all the way oh, to there, back up again to this wheel and then transport it through these Teflon tubes and here's the new wire spool and here's the used wire spool. So. So I enable flushing, enable the wire transport, then I turn the arc on and uh, then I enable an automatic feed rate control. So when I press this button, the speed of the machine is determined by the arc generator and not by the uh, F codes in code. Normally in the G codes the speed is determined by your F codes, but when I press this button uh, it's automatically determined by the arc generator. Then when everything is on, um, I press play and the code starts running and the machine starts cutting. Um, when the cut is stable, I press this button here, that's uh, the enable watchdog button. And what that does, it, it, uh, it runs a separate thread and that process, that thread, continuously monitors the arc voltage. And um, when the arc voltage is below a certain threshold for a certain amount of time, then you can be pretty sure that there is a short circuit that is caused by uh, a small piece that is cut free in the curve or in the cut that is blocking the cut. And then this process that runs in the background will automatically shut down the machine and um, uh, this prevents wire breaks and then I get an email stating in the email that I need to uh, uh, yeah, to act I need to uh, uh, deblock the blockage that has been uh, that has occurred in the cut so uh, that's really convenient um, here's the uh, user interface of the arc generator so uh, pretty straightforward I have my arc configuration library here so here are all a lot of uh, different parameters of things that I have cut so I can store my values here and then uh, I can send them over to the control screen, send them to the arc generator, configure it for cutting. And uh, yeah, basically that's it. Oh yeah, the um, enable watchdog button, that process that runs it, not only checks the arc, arc voltage, but it also checks if the wire breaks for instance, or by this switch, so if the wire breaks, this switch pops up and uh, then I also get an email that my wire has been broken. Or if the uh, water level in the uh, pre-filter here, if it goes above a certain critical level, then I, that can be because this filter is full. If the, if the water level goes above, above a certain critical level, everything shuts down automatically as well. Um, and then I also get an email with uh, exclamation marks that I really need to uh, fix the water issue. <laughs> okay, it's a bit of an explanation how the machine works. Oh yeah, here's a... So this, this top box I'm only using uh, the display. All the other buttons are there for legacy reasons, I don't use that anymore. Except for the on and off. And this box here is a separate box um, that uh, controls my wire. So it controls the wire tension and the wire speed. Simple box. It also holds all the solid state relays and the power switches and things like that uh, for switching the peripherals. Now it's time to start cutting.
So I got an email from my machine, which uh, told me that the workpiece was blocked. So uh, let's see what's going on. So I'm going to raise the uh, upper flushing head. That indeed is blocked. So as you can see the inside of the D is cut free, but now it's uh, jamming the hole. So I have to pry it free, like so. And then check if the hole is completely... Uh, oh, this is too... yep, yeah. now it's completely through. So I can lower the flushing head again and uh, Press resume, and then the cut will continue. Alright, I was waiting for that to happen. Now the machine has automatically stopped. And you get this message. Check the workpiece for a wire jam. So let's do that. And see what's going on. Raise the uh, upper wire guide. Now you can see what is plugging the hole. So let's remove the blockage. Something thin in here to see if it's completely free. Yep, now it is. Okay. Then we lower the wire guide again. Fix it. Okay. Then I go back to my computer. I click away the error message. Then I have to rewind. First I start my cooling again, because everything has been stopped now. Then I click on workpiece flushing. That makes a lot of noise. Then I uh, start my wire transport. Wait a few seconds for the wire to get up to speed. I start the arc again. And I press play. Now the cutting process resumes again. And you can see the speed. And I think it's done. Let's have a look. Let's see here. Yep, yeah, looks about done. Nice. Okay, let me get this stuff out of here. I need both hands, so I'm going to shut the camera off. And here they are, five logos.
Really nice. The top one is a bit discolored. But you can probably just brush that off. And the other ones are uh, yeah, perfect. That's how you cut the logo. Titanium logo. And here's the cut. Super nice. Look at how sharp those points are. Incredible. Okay, that's it for today. Hope you enjoyed the video. If so, you can click the like button. If you're not subscribed yet, you can uh, subscribe to this channel. If you would like to follow more cool content about um, uh, do-it-yourself, home shop, EDM machining. So, see you next time.